Hello, this time I'll begin to talk about edit mode, which is when we'll be able to manipulate the elements that make up our object here. If you've never heard of vertices or what extrude might do, I'll try and address those questions here before we move on with some more complex shapes. Depending on what sort of object you have selected, the interaction mode selector on the header of the 3D view shows different options. So, for example, if I select our camera object with right-click and take a look at the list, we see that it doesn't have any different modes. We can only interact with it in object mode. Our cube here has all these modes, and the one we're interested in right now is, of course, edit mode, so I will select it. There's a shortcut to switch between object mode and edit mode in this case, and that's the tab key. So things look a little bit different in edit mode. We now have access to the individual elements that make up the cube. These elements can be selected with right click and holding down shift as it allows us to add to or remove from the selection. The smallest element we have here is the vertex and these points in 3D space really tie the model together. The cube has eight vertices and each of these vertices is connected to three edges and where we have four edges is where we have a face which makes up one side of our cube. With that in mind, there are three different selection modes we can choose from on the header. We have vertex, edge and face select here. It's possible to hold down shift and be in more than one selection mode at once, but I'll forego that here. As you might expect, there's a shortcut to jump between selection modes and that's control tab. So, for example, if I switch to edge select mode, I can now select a whole edge without having to select the two vertices at either end. And in face select mode, I can choose whole faces without having to select the edges or vertices from which it's constructed. Just quickly before moving on, I want to highlight a point, and that is in edit mode, we're no longer editing the object in the broader sense of the word. Now we're editing the mesh which belongs to the object. Whatever we do to the mesh, even if we select everything and G and move it around, the object's location in 3D space doesn't change. The object's location is shown by this little orange dot in the center. Now that's the object's location in the 3D world. Notice in edit mode, when I move the mesh, the location, the origin of the object stays put. In object mode, the origin will move because we're now in object mode, moving the object. The properties region, which is revealed using the N key, shows the object's location in the world. When we're in object mode, you can see that changing as I move the object around. In edit mode, it's showing us the median or average location of our selection of elements in relation to the object's origin, unless we choose to have these numbers represent the world or the global location instead of the local location. Now this can be important and whilst it's not completely necessary to understand it right now, it's something I want to just touch on briefly as it's something that you might want to think about or bear in mind as we go forward. If it becomes really important later on, I'll make sure to highlight it then. It may surprise you to know that many of the most complex models that you've come across could have started from such a simple building block. Now, obviously, there's not a whole lot we can do with our cube here. I don't know, maybe we could select this edge up here and pull it down along the z-axis using GZ and make a sort of wedge shape. I'll add this lower edge to the selection and pull that out to make it a little bit longer. Or maybe we could control Z and switch to face select mode. Again, that's control tab. Uh, select this top face and press S to scale it down and make a sort of pyramid again down along the z-axis to make a more pleasing shape. We're limited to what we can do by the amount of geometry that's available here. What we really want to be doing is adding in vertices, edges and faces to make a more complex shape. One of the main tools for doing this would be the extrude tool. So as a quick example here I can select one of these faces and find in the tool tab extrude we see here a reminder of the hotkey, it's E, so I'll press that in the 3D view and now we see that several new connected faces have been extruded out from our selection. The purple line is there indicating the direction the extrusion wants to move in. This is determined by the direction the face is pointing in, so if I just undo that we can see that if I have two faces selected and extrude it would take the average direction of them. This is known as its normal direction. 
Each face has a normal, and its direction always points uh, away from the face, if you will. To move an extrusion freely, we can right-click. Now, this doesn't cancel the extrusion, it cancels the movement of the extrusion. It's then possible to press G, grab it to place it where we like, or we can constrain to some other axis by pressing it whilst in grab mode, so X to move along the X axis, Y for the Y axis, and Z for the Z axis. There was an important point there, which is after extruding, right-click does not cancel the extrusion. So if I do that now and uh, right click and I go on and do some other task forgetting to do undo, well what I've created are known as doubled vertices. As you see here, selecting a vertex on the corner and grabbing it, there's still one underneath. Now this can cause numerous headaches later on and fortunately there's a tool to automatically get rid of them. So if you accidentally do this at some point, uh, if we select everything with A, and find in the tool tab of the tool region this option remove doubles there is a sort of hotkey for that option and that's in the 3d view it has a specials menu which is activated using the w key and apart from the myriad of other options in there one of them is remove doubles and it can be found also in the vertex specials menu which is control v and edges and faces also have their own special menus as well uh, control e and control f so you might want to just take a look in there at some point and have a mess around with things, uh, whatever. In any case, however I find the Remove Doubles option, pressing that will remerge those vertices that are on top of each other uh, according to this limit which appears in the last operator panel. It's a feature of the tool region which shows for virtually all operations um, in, in, in order to let you tweak the settings after performing them. We can see now that the vertices are no longer doubled at the corners, however we could have avoided it by instead of just right clicking to cancel the movement of the extrusion, also using Ctrl Z to, to cancel the extrusion itself. It's possible to delete individual elements, so for example if I delete a vertex the faces that relied upon it also disappear and it's then possible to extrude even individual edges from vertices and fill faces in between them using F for face uh, when we have three or preferably four vertices selected to make a new face. This has been a quick introduction to edit mode. As you can see, there are many tools available to us in order to help create whatever shapes we want, though it would be impossible and really boring just to explain them all one by one. If you want to have a mess around with them, see what they do, read the tooltips, try and remember some hotkeys, what I'd like to do is continue on to another video, the process of actually modelling some reasonably simple stuff. So I hope to see you then.